Hello, everyone. My name is Emily Kuda, and I'm Perkona's Digital Marketing Manager here. We'll begin in just a moment, but first, I'd like to conduct a bit of housekeeping. First, please raise your hand using the hand icon located in the GoToWebinar control panel to let me know if you can hear me. Okay, great. Next, during this webinar, you will be on mute. Should you have any questions during the discussion, please enter them in the questions field within the control panel. At the end of the webinar, we will take time to answer as many questions as possible. Those that aren't addressed will be answered in a follow-up blog entry on Burkona's data performance blog. In addition, a recording of this webinar will be made available to everyone within 48 hours along with the slides. With that said, I would like to thank everybody for attending today's webinar, MySQL 5.7, Introduction for Operational DBAs, presented by Peter Zaitsev, CEO. Um, Peter, the floor is yours. Hey, uh, thank you, Emily, and uh, hello, everyone. So let's get started. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of ground uh, to cover today, and uh, we are going to talk about MySQL 5.7 uh, for uh, Operational DBA. First, I want to say what the MySQL 5.7 uh, is, a, is a great release, and it has a lot of great changes both for developers and for uh, uh, and for DBAs. This is why we have decided to do uh, the you know, two webinars. I will talk about the DBAs, and then uh, uh, we'll have another webinar which talk about the features MySQL 5.7 have to offer for developers. Now, how do I, uh, I split things here? Well, if you think about developers, uh, when it comes to database, I believe developers care about things which allow to uh, build them applications better, easier, and so on and so forth. And these are the things like JSON support or JS, full text search improvements, or uh, a better mm, optimizer. Well, if you're thinking about the DBA sides, uh, uh, those guys care about things like performance, uh, availability of a system, security, agility, visibility, as well as of the architectures they can uh, employ uh, for MySQL to uh, support their uh, development team better. So today we are going to talk uh, about MySQL 5.7 and what it has to offer for uh, operational D DBAs and we will cover all those sections mentioned uh, as well. I will provide some uh, additional information. So let's first go uh, and talk about the performance. As usually it happens with MySQL releases, MySQL 5.7 became uh, faster with a high concurrency. This is uh, the results uh, from uh, gear from uh, Oracle, and uh, this is just a nice picture to use. Uh, I can confirm uh, we had a pretty similar uh, the, uh, results ourselves. And we can use, uh, we can see if you are using some powerful hardware, as in this case, uh, this is from a system with uh, uh, 80 CPU threads, uh, or, or if you are looking at the uh, high concurrency, you are likely to see. Uh, much better performance. Now, what is interesting about this graph, you can see it only starts with uh, uh, eight threads. What happens below that value? And this is uh, uh, unfortunate uh, uh, thing with the MySQL releases when, when it comes to the single thread performance, the MySQL performance have been actually going slower over time, right? As you can see from uh, this graph uh, from MySQL 5.0 to MySQL 5.7, uh, we see uh, approximately 15% uh, uh, slowdown for uh, this uh, given uh, given benchmark. And this is actually the trade-off uh, what often have to happen in engineering. As low as you're going to complicate your code to scale better with uh, uh, with uh, many. Uh, with high concurrency as you implement their uh, more complicated login primitives and so on and so forth, often it becomes slower uh, for the single thread. 
another uh, reason for this happening is the MySQL features. The more features you implement, uh, both in terms of a par uh, uh, new syntax for a parser or for uh, different features in MySQL, uh, the optimizer, it all uh, requires uh, more CPU time, which uh, causes this kind of behavior. Now, what I'm very hopeful about with uh, the optimizer refactoring work and a parser of refactor work started with MySQL 5.7, I'm very hopeful what this trend will be reversed and we'll see the next uh, releases actually improving performance for single thread workloads as well. Another uh, uh, optimization in, in an NTB in terms of performance is uh, uh, the new uh, compression uh, implemented, which is called transparent page compression. It is designed to rely on the file system uh, hole punching instead of a pr pretty complicated uh, uh, approach to compression which was uh, used before. Uh, it's much simpler, but uh, unfortunately, it also relies on, uh, uh, on file system uh, support for large uh, amount of holes, right? Because what happens in this, uh, in this case is you are likely to have a small hole for uh, every page in the database and uh, in the compressed tables, which uh, produce files to may with many millions, sometimes tens or hundreds of millions of uh, holes, which uh, file systems don't uh, handle very well. Mark Callaghan have uh, wrote extensively uh, about this. Now, uh, if you find a good file system which uh, supports uh, many holes, then that can uh, really be a uh, very good uh, thing. Uh, what you can see, uh, the new compression uh, has slightly more disk space uh, usage compared to the, uh, uh, to the old compression, at least at this particular benchmark. But you can see it's uh, been uh, substantially faster than the old compression with a fast storage. And in this case, we're using fast SSD and special purpose and VMFS file system. Uh, or uh, it may be even uh, faster than uncompressed data if your uh, storage uh, is slow, right? In this case, uh, we are having the, uh, the SSD, then uh, the fact we can be reading the less data from the storage is uh, is uh, is worth the uncompression uh, overhead. Another very important mm, uh, uh, performance-related optimization in MySQL 5.7 is a parallel replication, also called like uh, multi-threaded slave. Now, uh, if you've been running MySQL in production a while, uh, you know for years we have been suffering with the fact what we can uh, really write a lot of stuff to the master, but because of MySQL replication being single thread, we can't really uh, re replicate it fast enough. Replication starts to lag, and then it's uh, not being able to catch up uh, anymore at all. And that became significant, uh, a significant problem. In uh, MySQL 5.6, there was parallel replication existed, but uh, it was kind of very coarse uh, working for a different, uh, different databases. And if you would uh, want to have uh, truly parallel replication, even if you have a single table as a hotspot, you would have to go to solutions like Vircona XRDB cluster or uh, later on MariaDB, which uh, implemented uh, parallel replication uh, early on. Now you can get a parallel replication uh, natively in the MySQL 5.7 by uh, very simply e enabling multiple parallel workers and uh, e the setting the parallel type to logical flow. Here are some uh, benchmarks for speed up uh, mentioned by Vitor Oliveira from uh, Oracle team. And uh, we can see for a uh, sysbench update test that you can get uh, up to uh, 12x. Uh, uh, performance improvement. So, if you can uh, be getting a very uh, heavy uh, right uh, workloads, uh, that can be really uh, very helpful to 
deal with, uh, uh, with the replication lag. Now, there have been a number of uh, optimizer improvements as well. And uh, optimizer improvements is something which uh, uh, often is uh, very transparent, if you will, right? I mean, I like uh, those because if uh, uh, the optimizer improvements are good, then your queries just uh, start to run faster uh, without you having to do, uh, do anything. Uh, the highlights of the optimizer improvements in MySQL 5.7 would you vote the union all doesn't need to use TMP table uh, anymore? That was a well overdue change. Now we also have a unified code for handling uh, views and uh, subselects in the front close, which is also some well overdue uh, refactoring. But view would be handled differently than subselect in the front close, also called inline view. That was kind of very bizarre and uh, unexpected by a lot of developers coming from different databases. We also get a better cost model uh, as well as refactored preferred statements and a, any query parser, which are all the uh, good improvements. Here is an example how you can uh, adjust the optimizer uh, plans. This is uh, optimizer costs. You can see this is designed in a very uh, SQL friendly way. It is uh, stored uh, in the table where you can uh, uh, store your new values, which will be persisted, and you can provide the, uh, the comments for that. The only downside to the current implementation, as I see, is uh, you don't really know what the current costs are, right? So you have to actually go to the source to uh, understand what is a baseline for key cost compare if you, for example, want to change that to have uh, 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 MySQL to start preferring the different uh, different plans. But if you are looking for some very advanced mm, query tuning, that is a very uh, uh, cool tool. Another great tool for uh, advanced query tuning is there is a lot of new hits uh, supported by the optimizer. And from my standpoint, I want the optimizer to be great. And by great, meaning it's always pick uh, the most optimal query optimizer plan without me having to do anything, but uh, the reality is uh, no optimizer is perfect. And through that, I want to make sure I have a hint so I can uh, actually explore different optimizer, uh, different plans that MySQL could execute to provide a feedback to, uh, uh, to the uh, development team to say, hey guys, you know what, in this case, the optimizer uh, to, uh, select this execution plan, but if I provide those hits and for, force a different execution plan, the query runs uh, 10 times faster. Perhaps you have to fix something. Maybe that's a cost adjustment, so maybe there's some other uh, logic which has to be done. And MySQL 5.7 provides a lot of hits, so you can, uh, you can do uh, those things very, very easily. In the DB temporary tables, this is uh, a great thing uh, uh, as well. Uh, for a while, we have been looking at how you can set up uh, their uh, temporary tables for InnoDB, both uh, temporary tables which are used by the uh, optimizer uh, on its own, kind of what I call the implicit temporary tables, as well as uh, the temporary tables we may use during some batch processing jobs. And this was one of the strongholds where the MySum uh, was used for, even if uh, InnoDB was used for more, most of your real production ta tables. Now in uh, MySQL 5.7, you can use InnoDB temporary, uh, temporary tables for both those cases as well. Now InnoDB temporary tables, they would be stored in the, in a separate table space. Uh, they don't do uh, a redo login, right? Because if a server ever crashes, all the temporary tables are gone, so there is no reason to do that. There is no change buffering as well because we assume uh, their uh, temporary tables are going to be small enough, so that's uh, not needed. And there is a lot of less locking because temporary tables are tables which are accessed by single thread uh, only, so there is no need to manage and all that uh, uh, fancy uh, uh, things to support a potential uh, access of multi-threads. Now, in a lot of cases, those uh, would offer you better performance in MySum. 
uh, temporary tables. This is example benchmarks, uh, again, done by the, uh, the team at, uh, at Oracle, uh, showing uh, using InnoDB as a storage engine for temporary tables for optimizer instead of MySum. And you can see where uh, things are essentially the same for a single thread. Uh, things became uh, much uh, better on the higher concurrency. And you would ask, okay, why would that uh, uh, would that happen? Well, and the reason for that is with my some temporary tables, even though uh, they are also handled uh, per thread, right, and there is uh, not a lot of logging required for that. Uh, the key cache or key buffer for my some tables is uh, is shared for. Uh, temporary and non-temporary tables, and the key buffer in MySum is a huge, huge contention spot. It is, uh, uh, has a very coarse uh, locking, and that wasn't designed well at all for modern systems with uh, uh, a lot of concurrent threads. Uh, another improvement in, in ADB is what the uh, index creation was uh, improved uh, significantly by uh, having the special code written which allows uh, to use, uh, you know, batch uh, uh, row inserts instead of just logically inserting row one by one. And for CPU-bound things like uh, uh, index build by sort, you can see up to 3x uh, performance improvement, which is a, uh, uh, that is a uh, uh, great, uh, uh, great change. Now, uh, another big thing uh, in performance improvements is support for native energy partitioning. Uh, if you know how partition implemented in MySQL, before MySQL 5.7, uh, each uh, partition was essentially its own table, and this kind of a partition storage engine was essentially bolted on uh, on the top. Now things change with InnoDB implementing its own partitioning and removing that layer of your overhead, and that provides two important benefits. First is uh, partition has much better performance, so actually it is usable with large number of partitions. For example, if you want table with uh, uh, maybe thousands of partitions, right now you can do that before that was a road of uh, suffering. And uh, it not only gives you much uh, better performance uh, in those cases, but also it, will, it uses much less memory if you have large amount of partitions. Let us now talk about the improvements uh, in the MySQL 5.7, which allows us to get a better uh, availability. The first one on my list is uh, semi-sync uh, replication improvement. One uh, replication uh, improvement which is important uh, there if you care about your data is uh, uh, you can actually eliminate loss of visible data with a semi-sync replication. Semi-sync replication in 5.6 uh, was a step up compared to asynchronous replication, but it uh, would uh, uh, allow certain, uh, cast, uh, certain clients to see the data uh, before it actually was uh, uh, acknowledged by the semi-synchronous slave, and in this case, in case of failure, uh, you can see the data gone, then certain clients have already uh, reported that data as valid to the clients, which uh, uh, is not a very great programming node to operate with. Uh, in case of MySQL 5.7, uh, now uh, the data is only visible to uh, all the concurrent clients after it was uh, Acknowledged as it's stored uh, in the slave uh, slave binder log, which is much better. Uh, additionally, as you can see in MySQL 5.7, there was an improvement uh, of uh, of uh, performance of a semi-synchronous network, especially with a high latency uh, networks. Right, as you can see in in, uh, uh, in those graphs, which is again uh, a very helpful improvement. Another uh, thing which I consider improving uh, the availability is statement timeout. Uh, you may not think about uh, that being related to viability at all, but in very many cases I see uh, server goes down because they are overloaded to some bad queries. 
you start uh, uh, application has some bad design queries which run forever and as you get more and more queries they uh, just consume all resources and then kill the server. We had some tools to manage them for a while. For example, in uh, Perpona Toolkit, very easy tool uh, which can spot and uh, and kill those queries for uh, kind of uh, uh, practice defense. But it is very nice to have mm, those features built in in the MySQL server now, where you can set the max statement time, for example, of a hundred seconds, and then uh, if select runs more than ten seconds, it will be uh, it will be killed. And of course, you can tune that so for example you allow your batch jobs to run longer uh, queries but uh, you uh, uh, the, uh, you set that to a lower value for your applications because I don't think more uh, anybody in the modern users will wait uh, you know 10 seconds for a page to load let alone 100. Now I think to your mind about this feature it only works for read only statements it doesn't work for uh, uh, for updates which uh, I think is fine and uh, understandable. Another great benefit in uh, MySQL 5.7 is what you can now move to GTID uh, replication uh, online. In the MySQL 5.6, to move to GTID, you would have to shut down your master and the slaves and then enable GTID altogether and bring it uh, back up, which is uh, not really feasible for a lot of 24 by 7 environments where MySQL is used. Uh, we had solution uh, in Perpona Zero for this problem for a while, but it is very uh, great. It's now in integrated MySQL 5.7 mainline. Another thing how uh, availability, uh, or availability is improved in MySQL 5.7 is what uh, in the GB crash recovery is uh, improved to go faster. There is a number of improvements why uh, this uh, happens, but uh, there it's uh, seen the most is if you have a large amount of tables with uh, energy file per table. You know, think thousands. Before MySQL 5.7, EnergyB would need to scan, open all IDB files, and uh, uh, you know, uh, to uh, check certain things about them, which can took a majority of recovery time with a large number of tables. Right now, it doesn't uh, need to do that because uh, it uh, really knows uh, which tables uh, are active and they potentially need to be uh, touched uh, during the crash recovery. Now, let's talk about security improvements. Now, uh, in the MySQL 5.7, uh, there was a lot of focus on uh, what is called secure by default. And which means what uh, install will uh, give you a better security by default. Frankly, some people think that uh, is too secure by default, making it uh, hard to use for people uh, who get uh, very good to used to MySQL installation, which was kind of pretty loose and insecure uh, for many years. For many years, but that is a choice which has been made in MySQL 5.7. So, uh, what does that mean? Well, there is no anonymous user created anymore. Only uh, one user rooted local host is created by install. And uh, it will not have an empty password, but it will have a CQ random password, which is uh, placed uh, in the uh, root uh, home folder, right? So you can uh, uh, access the server, right, or change password is needed. Also, the password strength uh, is uh, enforced, and I have seen a number of people confused saying, hey, you know, I'm trying to set up a password to, to password for best testing purposes, and uh, MySQL wouldn't let me to do that. Yes, uh, it would not let you do it by uh, default anymore. Now, uh, another improvement is uh, there are a number of uh, improvements to the encryption. One is 256-bit uh, uh, AES encryption is available. And in addition to that, you can provide the, the init, uh, init vector in addition to the key string, which uh, makes uh, uh, IES and both those changes make the IES uh, encryption much uh, stronger for uh, application-based uh, encryption. And here is example how you can uh, 
or uh, how you can do where uh, strong uh, uh, strong encryption. Password trained uh, informants, right? Uh, as I uh, as I mentioned, there is a password strength uh, enforcement by default, where you can see if you uh, try to set the password very uh, simple, it will not uh, uh, be allowed. Uh, there is a, a whole pa password validation plugin uh, available in, in uh, MySQL 5.7, so frankly you can choose uh, what kind of uh, uh, password uh, policies you want to enforce, and uh, you can choose even uh, um, to allow very weak passwords if you want, right? For example, for testing purposes, there is also password expiration uh, uh, enforcement allowed. So you can actually specify default uh, uh, default password lifetime, and then uh, after that time, users will be locked out from uh, performing any actions uh, on the data itself until they. Uh, change your password, and again, uh, uh, the, you can choose the passwords to never expire if that's uh, what you want for your application. Another convenient thing is what now you can actually uh, lock uh, account for whatever reasons uh, you would, uh, want to do. For quite a while, uh, we have been doing things like, well, let us uh, reset this guy uh, password because uh, this user is just too abusive on our database and we need to protect it for uh, others. And uh, uh, at the same time, it's not very uh, very convenient and it's not very user friendly. In MySQL 5.7, you can just clearly uh, alter user to lock or unlock and locked user will be, uh, uh, access attempts by locked user will be locked to the error log as well as you will see the status variable locked connect to see if uh, site users are trying to access your server. Another security improvement is what the SSL is becoming much easier to use. First, SSL uh, is now enabled by default if uh, or if OpenSSL or YSSL or all like Wolf SSL uh, libraries are installed uh, on the system depending on the version you are using. And also the SSL has become much, much easier to, uh, to, uh, uh, to configure. Uh, keys will be generated by default uh, in uh, many cases, uh, and there are some easy-to-use scripts provided to manage the uh, SSL, which is uh, much easier than previously there. Uh, configuring MySQL for SSL access was quite an exercise. Now, a very fresh and new, in MySQL 5.7 uh, uh, is a uh, table space encryption, mm -hmm. which is provided, which is uh, uh, pretty easy to use. So if you install a Keyrin plugin, you can create the table and say is that you want to to encrypt it. Uh, and there are some nice and fancy features provided, like for example, you can uh, do the master key rotation without uh, uh, needing to re-encrypt your data, which is uh, uh, which is quite uh, 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 quite good. Uh, at, the, at this time, there is uh, only table space is encrypted, so your NDB transaction log files, or binary log files, or anything else is not encrypted. But uh, I think this is uh, 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 just a first, uh, first step, and uh, I think we will probably see uh, other uh, encryption support uh, coming in, in coming in later, right? Just know that is kind of my uh, speculation uh, of what might happen. Uh, I wasn't aware about table space encryption coming until it was released in 5.7.11, so uh, it's not very clear here. Okay, let's now talk about some uh, agility features which allow us to uh, implement changes faster in uh, MySQL 5.7. One is we are continue having a uh, uh, walk of more and more uh, IT table functionality available uh, online. And a lot of those were already fixed uh, in uh, MySQL 5.6, 5, uh, 5, so this is kind of uh, minor ongoing cleanup. For example, now you can enlarge Varkar 
So for example, you have varchar 40 and then you figure out, well, you know, some people actually have names longer than that and I want to change it to varchar 80. You can now do that online without a table review because that is just uh, 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 just a metadata change, right? No table rebuild needed. Note, though, you cannot go from uh, the varchar less than 256 bytes to more than 256 guy, uh, bytes because this is going to be not just a metadata change, but there is some uh, the row format uh, different for those types. You can also now uh, do things like rename the index without the table re uh, table rebuild. Also pretty obvious, but uh, wasn't working before MySQL 5.7. There is a lot of focus also on making variable dynamics. Most of the new variables are created as dynamic. Uh, in the case, then, uh, they don't relate to something which is recreated on start. So, for example, specifying amount of purge threads or cleaner threads are not dynamic at this point because those threads are created at the server start, but a lot of other things are. And there are a lot of old variables which are gradually being converted to uh, be uh, dynamic uh, and settable runtime. I think the most important one in MySQL uh, 5.7 is you can actually uh, resize the energy buffer pool online. So uh, things to note uh, in this case. First is uh, you have energy buffer pool chunk. This is uh, uh, the chunk in which buffer pools are allocated, and this is kind of used as a uh, unit for your size for buffer pool as well uh, as uh, uh, in, uh, the, in what uh, chunks the uh, resize is going to happen. As well, uh, you should note what uh, online buffer pool uh, resize is warm, it's, uh, it's not hot. In this case, I was running sysbench update, and I uh, did the buffer pool resize in the background. As you can see, uh, we had certain uh, amount of seconds. I don't know, that's probably the 20 seconds right here. Then not a single update statement was uh, completed uh, when buffer pool resize was going. Right. So, uh, so that is uh, of course better than. Uh, and allow you to be more agile when you start a new MySQL server, but don't think that you can just resize your buffer pool during the peak uh, workloads and it will have no impact to your user query whatsoever. Query rewrite plugin. That I think is another great thing for uh, agility which DBAs can explore. I have seen in so many cases when you run some old application which may, may be not maintained anymore or maybe you don't have any source code, which uh, she sends nasty queries to MySQL and you don't know what to do with them, right? Or maybe you have uh, uh, certain things that you just can't uh, change uh, because of your uh, the development cycle. Now, you have, as a DBA, you can have control about that. Uh, about that. You can actually uh, rewrite uh, the queries with the query write plugin to, uh, to change them, for example, to uh, supply uh, the, uh, uh, the optimizer hints, or you can actually rewrite them to bad queries, so they are going to cause an error, and uh, uh, they are up to the developers will have to go and fix them instead of uh, causing the you know, problems on the application. Another uh, small change would have done is there was a new, ta new tool added, which is called MySQL Pump which I think stands for something like Parallel MySQL Dump, uh, which uh, allows you to dump uh, multiple uh, tables or schemas in, uh, in parallel, which is much better than MySQL Dump in this regard, but this is not as, uh, um, as uh, parallel as uh, my dumper at this point. Right? But that's still a, uh, a very good change, and I'm glad that uh, role that has been taken. Another benefit we have is uh, automatic and loose uh, space management, which is something what I think long problem in the MySQL 5, uh, the MySQL, where when you had some long running transactions, uh, you may have uh, a lot of space used by and space. Sometimes because of some configuration mistakes or some you know bad queries, 
you may have many tens or even hundreds of gigabytes being used by uh, undo space, and which was kind of space lost forever until you uh, recreate the main table space. Uh, in MySQL 5.7, this issue was fixed, uh, but you have to enable that uh, explicitly. By default, MySQL 5.7 will still keep undo space in the main table space, right? So, uh, but you have an option to enable uh, uh, external undo table spaces, and then you can enable undo log truncate and uh, max undo log size, which will uh, make uh, MySQL to uh, to truncate uh, or undo, uh, undo log if it uh, uh, becomes too large and there are no uh, active queries which need that undo space anymore, which is uh, 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 th that is a very good thing to uh, to explore. And I I'm thinking and hoping what that's probably will be become the default uh, configuration for undo table space as it becomes more tested and mature uh, in some next version. Now, let's talk about the visibility improvements. And I think the visibility is very, very, uh, very important because uh, in it allows us to both prevent problems by understanding uh, better what's happening with different queries and different uh, configuration, as well as um, to the resolve and pass when it happens. First is performance schema. There is a ton of performance schema improvements uh, from both uh, from the two sides. One is there is a lot of the new instrumentations, and then also the performance scheme became easier to configure. For example, with uh, automatic uh, memory uh, management and uh, uh, significantly low overhead. What I think is also great in MySQL 5.7 is what is sys schema, uh, which was uh, uh, in includes by default. And the C schema is a set of use and store procedures for performance schema, which uh, uh, allows you to get the uh, data in much more user-friendly way. Because uh, performance schema is great, but uh, information provided out there can be uh, really cryptic for uh, a lot of users. And I think what I uh, like uh, in a performance schema is their uh, better integration with uh, operating system. As you can see, in, uh, in performance schema threads, there is this uh, thread OS ID uh, added, which allows me to understand what exactly thread uh, uh, this uh, corresponds to. And what that means is I can use the modern Linux tools like Perf or something else to do a profiling for this specific uh, client connection or Let's say in this case I can profile the main uh, main thread to understand what is going on and where bottlenecks are. That is uh, very great for uh, advanced uh, uh, troubleshooting. In a geometrics, that is another uh, thing which uh, uh, has been out there in MySQL 5.6, but it is uh, getting more metrics uh, available in MySQL 5.7. There is a lot of data available in, in a geometrics table which is not uh, exposed in the show status or in a, any other way, right? So for example, if you guys want to see how many uh, transactions on those slots are being cached versus uh, uncached, well, you have a uh, very, uh, variable for that. Now, uh, there are also a number of tables added uh, to information schema. This is one of the great uh, things I found being quite, uh, quite helpful. Now, uh, the, if, you, uh, if you know their information schema tables does not really uh, can have an up-to-date table size. It just refreshed every so often then in the we choose to refresh statistics. If you really want to see uh, how much uh, given table the space takes on a disk, you can now, now go to a sys table spaces table and see actual file size. And what you can see here is both file size and the allocated size. Uh, this becomes very uh, important if you use in a GV transparent page compression because uh, uh, because of the holes, the allocated size is likely to be much smaller than uh, uh, the file size. 
another uh, very convenient feature is uh, what you can actually get the explain for uh, the for connection, which is a, a wonderful. Uh, if you have some queries which you see are taking a, l a lot of time, and uh, uh, the, the and potentially more time than you uh, the, uh, when you uh, when you expected, what you have to consider here is what in this case the actual plan uh, which is used to execute that given query is shown here. So it is different than if you would uh, just copy paste query from show process list and run explain for it. For example, if a query is uh, uh, taking a lot of time because some uh, weird uh, uh, execution plan uh, was um, uh, chosen for it, then uh, you would see that by run explain for connection. Another piece uh, uh, to consider uh, is JSON explain. The JSON explain is where all the new explain information is being added, right? So if you really want to get the insight about a lot of details about the, uh, the plan, with the costs and other execution details, you should learn uh, JSON explain. And also you can use tools like MySQL Workbench to uh, visualize uh, uh, explain plans uh, quite nicely is, uh, if reading JSON is uh, too hard for you. Now let's talk about some uh, things that MySQL uh, 5.7 allows us to get uh, the better uh, applications. One is we have now a JSON data type. And we'll talk more about that in our uh, MySQL 5.7 for developers uh, 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 webinar. But what that allows is to build hybrid SQL uh, and document stored applications. It's uh, much better than the JSON-based uh, functions or MariaDB uh, implementation because it has a very high-performance binary internal storage, right? It doesn't really store uh, JSON as a text, right? Which means uh, a par uh, it's much uh, faster to parse that to uh, access the JSON elements. And also, MySQL 5.7 actually has an optimizer support if you are going to go inside uh, JSON and uh, uh, refer to certain you know, columns in it, which is uh, really helpful. Multi-source replication. That is another uh, uh, well uh, or overview uh, feature. Now, uh, if you think about the MySQL uh, replication, uh, it supports different uh, replication topologies for a while, right? You can have master to slave, or you can have master and ma many slaves, or you can even you get like some uh, a daisy chain replication. What you couldn't have is a sort of a fun in replication. Then many uh, uh, servers replicate one server, for example, for some data aggregation and, uh, and analytics. Now you can do that since uh, MySQL 5.7, which allows you to uh, deploy more uh, different MySQL uh, applications. Generated columns, that is another quite uh, handy feature. Uh, again, uh, we'll talk more about that in MySQL for developers, because developers will absolutely love this feature. But it is uh, great, because uh, it allows you to uh, get uh, more uh, columns to the table. Uh, without uh, setting up for triggers, right, and without uh, blowing up your table size. For example, if I would have something like as a uh, invoiced uh, uh, line items table, right, and I want uh, to see not only the, the price of the item, right, but price for all the items in this case, I can just uh, add a column uh, of a total price in euros, which uh, is computed as price multiplied by amount. And then I can even index that column if I, if I have to. So mm, that is great. Another piece uh, which uh, developers would appreciate is what you can have a multiple triggers on the same, in the same event. Right? For a long time, we had this issue with MySQL where you would be able to get only one trigger for, uh, on insert. And that means if you have a two developers group and each of them want to uh, log or process a, a insert in a table uh, the same way, they'll have to cooperate and 
uh, write a trigger which does both of the things what they have to do, which is kind of inconvenient. Now each of developers can maintain their own set of triggers uh, as they like, and you can manage in uh, which uh, sequence uh, triggers are going to be fired. Okay, so let's talk about now some uh, additional information which you'll uh, find uh, helpful. Uh, now, if you look at the MySQL 5.7, which is a version which I think is a time to uh, uh, to kill uh, mice, most of the features why you would like to see, uh, uh, still be using MySQL are now sold in MySQL 5.7. Full text search, the uh, spiral index has been googled for temporary tables. One thing which is uh, not uh, solved is fast count star uh, for the, without a very clause, but uh, that is something which uh, uh, typically can be worked around. Also note there are a lot of uh, default changes in uh, in MySQL 5.7. You'll see the SQL mode uh, uh, has changed by default. The bin log format is now row, right, uh, instead of um, statements. So. Uh, really, we see what the row-based replication became became a development focus. Uh, NAD file format was changed by default, and uh, 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 NADB checksum. Uh, there are some other changes which you may want to evaluate as you are planning to move your application to MySQL 5.7. Now, in this uh, overview, we covered a good amount of uh, features, but uh, not all of them. There are actually more than 150 new features in uh, MySQL uh, 5.7, and there is a great list maintained by Morgan Talker, which is uh, humbly called the complete list of features, right, which you guys can uh, uh, look into. Now, uh, you guys may be wondering where do we stand if we're on a server uh, 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 5.7, and uh, here is what is going on. Now, if you guys don't know, the Percona server is our variant of the MySQL 5.7 which includes all MySQL 5.7 community features. We haven't uh, uh, taken away everything or uh, user uh, visit facing, uh, right? So there is not going to be any difference like, well, our JT ID is different like happens uh, with MariaDB, for example. And we provide alternatives to many uh, enterprise-only features which are not available in MySQL Community Edition. Our software is 100% uh, 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 GPL open source with no uh, no restrictions, right? You don't have to uh, be subscriber to access uh, recent updates, so there is no like commercial enterprise only features and so on and so forth. Right now, Percona 057 is uh, at release candidate two, and uh, the GA release is pretty much uh, imminent. Is uh, going to happen. Uh, within a, a very short uh, uh, time right now, right? But uh, I would uh, highly suggest you to uh, check our RC2 out, and if there is uh, any feedback you have, uh, it's a great time to provide that. Now, what Percona Server offers you? Well, we have been always focused on the visibility, so Percona Server provides you even more visibility to be able to look into things and uh, resolve uh, features faster. We provide you a low overhead, for example, table user index access statistics, which doesn't require you to enable the uh, performance schema. We have uh, things like uh, analysis of query response times or more information in uh, uh, in slow query log, which can be very helpful to troubleshoot uh, queries, as well as more information schema tables. This is an example of a query um, a response time, where you can see uh, how many of the queries uh, fit in the different buckets. And in this case, I can actually see, wow, for this workload, I had 64 queries which took more than 100 seconds. These are actually queries which, uh, uh, which uh, uh, were uh, run uh, when I did the online index, uh, the online buffer full uh, resize for a simple workload. We also give you more control. Uh, by providing usability uh, utility user, right, which is kind of hidden user which you can uh, uh, create if you are uh, deploying uh, a system as database as a service for your customers. So this is the user you can do all kind of maintenance uh, on the system, which uh, and the users wouldn't see him. You can. Inf 
Enforce storage engine, which typically means enforcing MySum when you don't want uh, uh, to have user creating MySum storage engine, which you can't really provide them a, a good, reliable backups, right, or, uh, or transactions for. We also have things like setting variables for a statement, which is very helpful uh, because you can uh, set uh, things like uh, larger sort buffer size or uh, the, uh, some other variables to help the statement uh, performance execution without having to set that for a session and then uh, reset that back again. Uh, we found that's very helpful. In terms of enterprise security, we offer both to record uh, PAM authentication plugin and audit plugin very similar to what uh, MySQL Enterprise have to offer. Uh, you can uh, explore that. And uh, we also have uh, a lot of things with better performance uh, uh, and uh, better agility. For example, uh, you can use Percona uh, Extra Backup to get low in impact backups with backup logs. Percona Extra Backup supports MySQL 5.7.2, but in Percona Server we can uh, be uh, providing you backups with a less uh, impact and less downtime. You can also get it through incremental backups and faster backup, uh, backups with uh, uh, change tracking, where, uh, which is very helpful if you have, uh, uh, the, if you want incremental backups for data which are, which are very large. You can scale with uh, uh, to 10 plus uh, K connections with a thread pool which is uh, very similar to MySQL enterprise scalability uh, plugin. And I think what is especially great with MySQL, if you're going to serve 5.7, is what we are really uh, planning to do a lot of ongoing work uh, making our Percona Serve 5.7 better based on the uh, real uh, customer workload, which is just starting because people are only starting to move to MySQL 5.7 and uh, Percona Serve 5.7. A highlight of Percona Server 5.7 uh, is the TopoDB storage engine, which is the only mature transaction storage engine alternative to, uh, uh, to, uh, to InnoDB. Uh, I wouldn't say what TopoDB is a storage engine which you should set uh, as default and it is uh, to replace InnoDB in all workloads. It's not. But it is uh, great for uh, certain things. It's right optimized storage engine, right? So it can handle the mm, large number of inserts and the large uh, data sets very well. It offers you high compressions, much higher if in a DB. Uh, and it works great if a slow, uh, slow storage. If you're running a MySQL in the cloud, you may also be able to save some money because it uh, allows you to uh, reduce both your space usage as, as well as the IOPS you may be paying for. Here is an example of uh, disk space usage, right? This is a uh, somewhat artificial case for a very highly compressed data. But you can see here is if the data is highly compressible, then uh, TopoDB can uh, get you compression by far uh, better than uh, uh, you would uh, get with uh, in a DB both uncompressed as well as compressed uh, storage engine. Now at this point, uh, and especially if you guys are interested in MySQL 5.7, I would like to invite you to Percona Live uh, in April in Santa Clara. We'll have a lot of talks about MySQL 5.7. We have uh, uh, many uh, presenters from the Oracle team, so you have a chance to talk to actual developers who are behind a lot of the code in MySQL 5.7. And uh, it's going to be a fantastic conference all around, so uh, please join in. And um, uh, that's uh, it for me. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, I we have a few minutes to answer those. All right. Well, thank you so much for that, Peter. Um, at this time, we'll take your questions. Um, please go ahead and enter them in the questions panel down below. Any questions that could not be answered, we'll answer them in a follow-up blog post on our uh, website. And with that said, um, so the first question is for you, Peter. For starting parallel slave working, does it require any settings in master? 
uh, no, you don't need uh, any uh, uh, the settings in uh, in master. Right, assuming that uh, uh, that's uh, the MySQL 5.7. But both, you have to get a both master and slave uh, to, to, you know, uh, on the 5.7, I think, to get that. Okay. Um, next question. Can you override global max underscore statement underscore time if slash when you expect the query to take longer? Oh, yes. Yes. So uh, that is a, a global variable, right? And uh, you can uh, the, the, you can change it uh, both for, for a session, for example, for a batch job, right? Or you can uh, even set that uh, uh, per, uh, per statement uh, uh, to, if you need to. And that's actually can be a good practice, right? I mean, you figure out what the uh, default is and then say, hey, you know what? I, generally, I don't want uh, uh, selects to run more than 10 uh, seconds unless I explicitly tell, hey, this is a long select and uh, uh, it may run faster and, and let it be. OK, um, next question. Is encryption encryption at rest? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So uh, the, in this case, uh, in a uh, table space encryption, yes, that is a uh, th that is an uh, uh, the, the encryption at rest. Okay. Um, next question: Will Percona Extra Backup support five point seven encryption? Well, uh, the, this is a very new uh, uh, new feature which was just uh, uh, just uh, released, right? And so we are uh, looking. Uh, Looking at this, our current plan are uh, the, uh, to support it, but I don't uh, have any uh, uh, any promise when exactly that's going to happen. If we copy the few binary like MySQL dump from 5.7 to 5.6 and want to take the parallel backup, is it possible? Well, uh, yes. Yeah. So if you look at the uh, MySQL uh, uh, MySQL pump, you can take that. Uh, you can use it with MySQL 5.6 as uh, the, as far as I as far as I remember. Is GTID compulsory for parallel replication in MySQL 5.7? Well, uh, the, honestly, I I don't remember uh, the answer to this uh, this question, so you'll have to, to research it. Anything in particular to be aware of if upgrading from 5.5 .5 to 5.7? Well, uh, I would say if you're upgrading from 5.5 .5 to 5.7, then I would uh, uh, the, make sure to invest additionally in the testing because such over version upgrade is not uh, road uh, traveled that much as a uh, upgrade from 5.6 to 5.7. So uh, th that I would point out. So there is like uh, likely more behavior changes and some uh, uh, potential data format changes and so on you know, uh, the, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I would also say what uh, MySQL 5.7 is still uh, relatively new for MySQL uh, ecosystem. So I would uh, expect this kind of uh, uh, the, um, the community knowledge, right, about uh, all the issues and implications of the upgrade to 5.7 five, uh, is still to be discovered. How is concurrency handled in multi-source replication? Well, uh, if you think about that, the multi-source replication is uh, is um, like another dimension compared to parallel replication. So what you can have uh, in uh, MySQL 5.7 is sort of multiple replication channels, right, which corresponds to uh, multiple uh, sor uh, sources. Uh, and uh, you can have them being configured with a different uh, number of, of uh, of workers each, right? So uh, you can have, uh, uh, you can use parallel replication and uh, multi-source replication uh, at the same time. 
Um, tables that have foreign keys contains will be able to be partitioned in 5.7? Well, well uh, you know, honestly, I didn't, uh, I didn't test that. How does it play with the foreign, uh, foreign keys and, uh, the, and partition? But that, that is a uh, good question to look at. Okay. Um, how can you migrate from compressed INODB to TocoDB? Well, if you want to m migrate from uh, InnoDB uh, compressed and all to TocoDB, uh, you just have to the, install the corner server, enable TocoDB storage engine, and then just run uh, run alpha table. Uh, the, if you concern about, uh, if you have to do it online, well, you can use one of the tricks. If you do it on the, on the slate and switch or use PT online table, uh, uh, PT online uh, the schema change, which uh, allows you to do uh, 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 this kind of migration online. Okay, um, it, we are at the top of the hour. Um, any questions that we weren't able to answer today, we'll follow up in a blog post. Um, thank you so much for everybody attending today's webinar. Um, my SQL 5.7 Introduction for Operational DBAs, presented by Peter Zaitsev.